Good morning from Drinks and Dragons. This is Ryan. That's a little bit of ice and snow on the ground. So let's go inside and play Dungeons and Dragons, shall we? All right, folks, welcome to a simulated game of Dungeons and Dragons. Um, so what you have here is, uh, this is actually a sewing uh, vinyl mat that my wife uses, and it is fantastic for drawing maps. It's got a grid line built on it already so we can keep up with distances if we want to and depending on how your players like to play um, yeah this is a great tool to add but it is not necessary what you need is a dungeon master with dice and players with dice so in this simulation the DM will be red uh, the players will be blue and uh, notice I've got all of my stuff here if you're like me you kind of went all in and bought everything you've got a you know, maybe uh, this is from the starter set, The Lost Mine of Vendelver. Um, maybe you got the Dungeon Master's Guide, you know, the Monster Manual. This is really probably the, the most important thing that you can buy starting out. If you wanted to spend some money, um, buy the Player's Handbook. But you don't have to, to buy this in order to play the game. You can get started right away uh, by downloading uh, the rules from Wizards of the Coast. There's a free PDF, which is a, you know, sort of a truncated version of the Player's Handbook, and it's available online. I'll put a link uh, down below this uh, video that you can get to this PDF for, you know, if you wanted to go ahead and start playing. So don't, you don't have to, but it's great. It's such a fun book. You spend hours reading it. Uh, this is also the starter set, and I'll put a link to, that was the dice that's inside here rolling around. I'll put a link uh, below this video as well. I've done a, <clears throat> about that, I've done a, uh, a session on the starter set already, um, just kind of unpacking it that you can take a look at as well. This is actually a really good bargain. It also has a sort of a truncated version of the rules, which is a, a great uh, set of rules that you can start with right there, the rule book. Um, so that's that's all kind of nice to have stuff. It makes the game a little bit easier when you're ready to get going. So one of the things that I mentioned early on is I was looking for videos. I said, I've got all these books, I've got all this stuff. How do you actually play? Well, it's kind of simple, really. You get a dungeon master, that'll be me. You've got players for today, that'll also be me. Um, and then you've got an adventure, and so the part of the Dungeon Master says, okay, let's just say we're all sitting around the table here. There's like three or four folks sitting around me here. I'm the Dungeon Master and I'm looking at them. And I will spend, you know, a few minutes sort of laying out the scene. Uh, you know, each of these adventures around this table has a set of skills. They have a background, a backstory, uh, and they come together as kind of a group on a quest of some sort. And I, the Dungeon Master, am going to help sculpt that quest. And the decisions that are going to be made, if there, if there are some decisions that I can just kind of make as the Dungeon Master, just based on, you know, my understanding of the rules, or based on, you know, kind of what's practical. But what makes the game really fun is if you roll the 20-sided dice uh, to, to help inform whether or not a decision goes your way or not. So let's start a game. Here's an adventure hook. Uh, you are a group of adventurers who are sitting in a pub bragging about how good you are at what you do. And you are overheard by a, a, a gnome who approaches the table. And the gnome says, uh, you have the kind of skills that my master, Gilfeldar, the High Elf, could really use. How about that for a gnome accent, huh? And so, uh, you might say, well, well hmm, or what uh, kind of skills was your master seeking? That's the Sean Connery dwarf. And the High Elf says, or the gnome says, well, my master seeks a, a scroll that is apparently hidden in the cavern of Wyvon Tor. He has sent many adventurers to retrieve it, and none have returned. And you adventurers say, Hmm, well, what's uh, in this for us? We don't just uh, go adventuring for nothing. Oh, perhaps there is treasure also in the, in the cavern, and 
and my master is very wealthy. He will pay handsomely. Voila. What do you do? Do you go to seek the scroll for your own benefit? Do you go to seek the scroll kind of as a paid mercenary? Um, or do you just want to go see what's in the cavern? Why are people going there and not returning? So are you hooked into the adventure? And that's kind of the dungeon master, sort of laying that out, laying that out for you guys. And uh, so then you decide amongst yourselves um, as a group, you know, do you have conversations? Maybe hopefully if you're hamming it up, and by the way, that's actually what you should be doing because that's when it gets really fun. Um, if you're hamming it up, then, uh, you know, you may decide in your, in your voices to go forward and, and seek out this adventure. So maybe this is all the Dungeon Master shows you, is the entrance to the cave. And so you're, you're looking, you don't see what's, which way is what, you don't see what to turn, uh, which way to turn, you don't see which direction it goes, you can kind of infer. Um, or your Dungeon Master may be drawing it out, like actually, this uh, map on this page here, on this uh, um, board here, is a recreation of this map that I had printed out ahead of an adventure with a group that I DM. Um, but let's say this is all we're playing with, and the adventurers approach, and you, the dungeon master, say, Okay, after a day's hike, uh, you crest a hill and see in the distance tucked behind some large trees, what appears to be the opening of a cavern. Okay, and you would stop there. The player characters decide, well, what do they want to do? Do they want to barge right up to the, to the entrance? Do they want to slow down? Do they want to maybe split up and see if there's anything that they can see? Do they want to see you know, what's happening around the entrance of this cavern? Um, it's kind of up to them. And let's, uh, let's see one of the player characters Let's just grab this guy here from the starter set is a, a human fighter and we don't have a name for him. Let's just call him Baron. And so Baron might say, hmm, I look around for a hill that I might be able to climb to see if I can get a better view of the entrance of this cave. And it's important, you know, remind your player characters as well. Don't ask the dungeon master, hey, can I go find a hill to climb? You know, sometimes it's okay just to assume that, you know, that there's a certain terrain there that you might be able to find a hill somewhere and climb. And uh, that just enriches the experience. And so you, you find a hill to climb, right? And then uh, you ask the dungeon master, so do I see, what do I see? The dungeon master might say, well, as you climb a hill, you notice strewn about the entrance of the cavern what appear to be bones of various shapes and sizes. You can't make out what types of creatures uh, these bones might have once belonged to, but it is certainly an ominous sight. Ooh, how about that? So, the fighter, Baron might take that intel, that information back to the group, even though we all kind of heard it, and relay that. Uh, so I've done some scouting, and it appears to be uh, bones at the entrance of this cave, and I, I couldn't tell from where I was at, um, you know, kind of how they got there. Uh, so the dungeon master might say, okay, so what do you guys want to do? And so as an adventure group, you might want to venture forward. Um, I want to inspect the bones and see if I can get some more uh, information about you know, maybe the creatures uh, that uh, they represent or maybe the cause of the death of the creatures, that type of thing. And so here's where we'll start playing some kind of, uh, off, you know, sort of traditional Dungeons and Dragons. The Dungeon Master might say, okay, great. Make a perception check. And basically that's the Dungeon Master's way of telling the player character to roll their 20-sided dice to determine whether or not, in the, in the eyes of the dungeon master, the player can perceive what is going on with these bones. So the, the player will take his 20-sided dice, or her 20-sided dice, and roll it. Ooh. A two. Okay, so 
We're gonna go ahead and just add the modifier to that so I can show you how to do it. But the player will roll that too. And then we'll look on their player sheet in this list of skills here. And in this list is perception. And there's a number there, plus three, which is the combination of their wisdom modifier, plus one, plus their proficiency bonus. Because according to this player sheet, Baron, the human fighter, is proficient at perception. But according to the roll of the dice, uh, not so much. So two plus three, five. Uh, so the Dungeon Master might say, yeah, you look at the bones and you can't tell. Yep, there's, they're definitely bones. Yeah, something like that. Um, and so, hmm, you decide maybe somebody else wants to go check. Let's just say there's another character, an elf. Well, I want to check the bones. <laughs> Not much better. Uh, maybe a dwarf. Eleven. So eleven, let's say the dwarf has a perception modifier of, say, plus two. And as the dungeon master, you decided really ten was all you needed. And so uh, eleven plus two is thirteen. Ten was the threshold, so thirteen means that uh, the dwarf can tell what was happening with these bones. Uh, now I'm dungeon master. You you look at the bones, and upon closer inspection, you discover that they are gnarled with uh, teeth, gashes, very sharp teeth. Looks to have sliced through these bones like knife through warm butter. Hmm. Okay, team. You got a group of folks now standing out in front of the out in front of the the entrance, uh, all staring at inside. One of them might say, "Can we see inside the cave?" Um, it's very dark inside the cave. Uh, you can only see about twenty feet using the natural daylight that's shining in. And so now, what do you do? Uh, so you may decide that of your group, there's someone who might have dark vision. Dark vision is a a trait of certain races, uh, such as dwarves, um, and dark vision allows people to see these these uh, races to see in the darkness. And so you might say, "All right, well, run up to the front of the of the of the cavern and see if you can see anything." Hmm. Yeah, right. Did you see the bones? I'm not running anywhere near that. Or you might say, um, "Hmm. Well, maybe we all proceed into the cavern, but let's let." Uh, kind of order our, our marching order with maybe the the two guys, the two characters that have, you know, dark vision, and then maybe there's two more people playing, and and those two in the in the back. Or you may do single file, something like that. But just it's important to sort of let the dungeon master know. So what is your marching order? Mm -hmm. So you decide as a group how you want to go in. Maybe you don't want to go in. Maybe you want to have a spellcaster, a wizard, you know, light up the cave to see if uh, you guys can see anything. Maybe you want to try to remain uh, cloaked in darkness and take your chances uh, entering the cave. And so all of these decisions, you know, there's an infinite number of decisions you guys can make. All the while, the dungeon master, the dungeon master knows what's inside the cave, right? And the players do not. And that's that's what makes this game so fun and so dynamic, especially if you're invested in the characters and you have a dungeon master who's invested in kind of moving the game along. So I hope that session was helpful. In a future video on how to play Dungeons and Dragons, maybe the part three, we'll talk about magic a little bit. Um, magic sounds complicated. It is a little bit more difficult to get your head around, but once you start playing using spells, uh, the possibilities just open up again, and uh, the game continues to unfold and just be a lot of fun. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing to the channel and uh, sharing it with all your friends. Uh, just anxious to share my newfound love of this game with you guys. So have fun, and this is Ryan from Drinks and Dragons, signing off.